Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today Eric and I are going to try something uh, that might be kind of insane, uh, but that's appropriate because we're going to be talking about a series that is insane. Uh, Eric and I are going to do a speculation video about Gotham Season 3, and different from other speculation videos we have made in the past, uh, this is going to be a thing where you might sometimes wonder if we're joking or not. Because, Eric, I don't know that I can pitch an idea or or uh, or predict something that this show might do that is too outlandish for it. I mean, I can just sit here and, and, and make up things. Might this, in fact, be the show where I will get dark side eating babies? It, you know what could happen? I don't know if they're allowed to use dark side. That's true. But if they were, <laughs> yes, Absolutely. <laughs> No, it will be, and I just want to make sure that this gets said, because Eric and I tried to record this a little bit ago, and we had technical difficulties, but Eric said that it will be like throwing laughing fish at the wall to see if it's, that's exactly what this will be like. <laughs> and I just absolutely love that. So Eric has been reviewing Gotham on the channel, and I, and I, and I, and I have to say, I have missed talking about this show. I, I, I kind of wish I had somebody to talk to about it. I would love to if we could find the time to bring that back uh, as as a joint thing and do Gotham discussions again as a prime time crisis thing. Uh, that I have come to exactly the same place you have, Eric. It, it is baffling. The show makes no sense. I don't think the people making it know what they're making. Somehow or rather, it has become this consistently inconsistent thing. Maybe not even inconsistent, it's just consistently bizarre, strange, black comedy, but but bizarre cheese fest thing. And, uh, like, they don't know what they're making, but I think I love this show. It's modern art. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know that you're being ironic when you say that. <laughs> I'm, um... I mean, I guess it would depend on the intent of the creators. Like, when you keep... What I mean is, when in your Primetime Crisis videos, you keep saying, you love it, it's brilliant, I don't know how facetious you're being. Well, I, I realized I, I could interchange the words terrible and brilliant, um, or wonderful and awful, almost with anything I say about the show, and I'm being as honest on both sides. Yeah, can, can we can we both agree that it is one of the most entertaining things we're looking at right now, and it is absolutely nothing even close to anything resembling art. Yeah, no, it's it it is it is post content art, like it's just it's insane or post substance, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I mean anything artistic about it is purely accidental. Maybe except like that's the thing for, is I don't uh, except for aesthetic and stuff because it's still part of what makes that work and makes it such a weird experience is that the production it's values are fabulous. Yeah, and it and it, and it's directed straight. Yeah, it's direct. It's not acted straight. Like if you're not paying attention, it feels like just another TV show. Like if you had it on the background. Yeah, and there's gotta be people that that take it seriously, like it's just a normal show. Um, I have a friend who likes it, um, and he doesn't laugh at it as much as I do, except for when we're talking about it, and I'm like, this is insane and ridiculous, and he's like, yeah, and he laughs, but I don't get the sense that he's laughing while he's watching it like I am. It is, I, I have such a strange relationship with it, because I, I'm not remotely invested in it the way I'm invested in other uh, in in other media, in other narratives, uh, I don't care about these people as people because they're not they're not people. They're 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 like uh, they're like these weird uh, melodramatic cardboard cutouts. Like they're very they're very two dimensional wooden people, but they're really over the top and and outlandish. But it's the show that I look f most forward to every week. Like there are they're some not shows. Two dimensional. They're negative two dimensional. Yeah. Because yeah. they can they can be anything. Well, that's a good point, and and and, that, and and that's the thing. That's what makes it easy, and it feels like it's cheating, and that's why I can't give it too much credit for how much fun I'm having with it. Because I think I still think it's sort of in spite of it. I'm, 
I'm not sure. I but I don't know. Interviews and stuff with the cast and crew. I don't know whether this show is tongue planted in cheek. Because if it is, it is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it makes you wonder if, like I said, it feels like a social experiment. It's like somebody, like the somebody has to know what they're making. Somebody writing or somebody working on the show has to know what it is. Now, I don't think it was this at the beginning. No, it absolutely was not. Uh, this was a show I could talk about, like, at least close to traditional narrative at the beginning. It was heightened, it was exaggerated, it certainly had elements of melodrama, but it was about stuff. Um, I mean, I used to talk, it, it, this feels like ages ago now, like, I used to talk about the shoe motif. Like, it was a motif. Like, 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 episode to episode, they were they were building on this symbol and it was going to become something. And after a while, it just started to look like uh, it was a coincidence where we somehow or rather shoes them. kept wending their way into these scripts. I think the moment that I think the moment that the show turns is when Barbara comes out of the closet as a psychopath. Yes. And it's treated like, well, I was always a psychopath and I just never realized yeah, it's treated like it was seated, and if you went back to the beginning and watched it all the way up, you'd be like, oh, of course, it was in front of us all the time. Uh, no, they they wanted us to legitimately like that character, and they resp And I feel like it sure watches this way, that the response to our response to that character was, okay, everybody thinks she's nuts, we'll just make her nuts. Well, and that she was so clearly wrong for that role. Um... And that she was not good in that role. I, I do think it was like, whether it was our response or them realizing that it wasn't working. Yeah. There was a distinct choice made. That yeah, was but not it wasn't planned. all the actress's fault. A lot of it was material they gave her. I I don't think she ever fit into that. My my view on her has always been that she she feels like an evil cheerleader type who was playing a loving girlfriend. Well, do you think then that they were... Like, like, uh, you know, as they went along, giving her more and more obnoxious psycho yes. girlfriend stuff to do. Is that what it was? Because, because you're right. Is. That is the, I mean, you're, you're right that that's where the, the, the switchover happens. Because, like, and they took it all the way. When she murders her own parents. <laughs> like, wait, wait, what? And... And I, and I, now she might be a redeemable character that Jim Gordon oh might my God. actually fall in love with. I know, yeah, and and, and so because I, she loves him enough to let him go away. Yeah, when you said that's when the turn happens, like I think that's also uh, the turn for 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 the entire show. Like 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 I think the attitude they had about that becomes the attitude they have about the show. Yeah, it's like they stopped taking it seriously and decided it's this whole other thing, and like it's it's just this really violent black comedy cheese fest. Well, and they've gotten to a point where there are no dumb ideas. Yeah, none. You um, can do anything. And there's Matches no, Malone killed Bruce Wayne's parents. Well, and, and once they've done that, um, and, and doing like that weird stuff they did with like Two-Face uh, Riddler and things like that, like they're so far past being like, well, that's not like the comics. Like Jim Gordon could die. Le Jim Gordon can legitimately die in this television show. And because this, this show will never match up with any Batman continuity. We could find out he was never actually Jim Gordon. Let, let's, we'll go ahead and get we, into predictions. We, we can Smallville uh, Jimmy Olsen him. Jimmy Olsen it. I, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, and, 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 okay, before I say this, let me also just, just throw out the phrase telepathic dolphins <laughs> and then move on. Um, you know, not the first thing I've watched with telepathic dolphins. Well, it didn't actually have it was just a mention of telepathic dolphins. Well, yeah. I don't understand that scene. Steve, well, yeah, well, I watched it because I wasn't watching it when that happened, and Steve wouldn't stop talking about it, and I was like, maybe someone's uh, a Johnny Mnemonic fan because there's a telepathic uh, coke addicted dolphin in that. See, I don't know if I, I don't know if, I'm, if I'm right about this. I feel like that was when Steve was like, maybe I'm not going to watch the show anymore. And then I told him about the telepathy. And he was like, what? And then he watched it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm right about that. But like, I still don't know what was going on in that scene and how on drugs whoever wrote that scene was. 
Because that's, and like, I don't usually jump to that. That is an absolutely, even for that show, I, I couldn't even believe what I was watching. I rolled it back and watched it again twice in succession. I have I two possibilities for how that happened. At. Yeah? I, I have two possibilities. One is, the person that wrote it is like a conspiracy theorist and like snuck at it, thought he was, you know, sneaking into his script. He was going to get the truth to the masses. You the know, other you is... Know are some of those in, in Hollywood. Is it, yeah. is it Orsi or Kurtzman? Uh, That's a massive conspiracy theorist. I hadn't even heard that. One, one of those guys uh, allegedly is a massive conspiracy theorist. I was thinking about back in the day... Uh, uh, SF Debris has, has a video Not about the, like, history. Not like and stuff. I just I've read that, and I've read interviews with him that sure make it seem like he is. And I, I can't remember. I think it's see. I, I got to be. I think it's Orsi, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was I was I was thinking of uh, there's a video that uh, SF Debris did on the history of Doctor Who, and near the end they bring in a new script editor talking about old Doctor Who. Near the end they bring in a new script editor for the show, and when asked what his goals were for the show he said i want to bring down the government <laughs> <laughs> through doctor who it's great idea. yeah um so yeah it's either that or it's supposed to be a an aquaman reference because if aquaman exists in this universe dolphins are in fact telepathic yeah yeah but it was so vague and random and that person like like well, I don't know that she was. Sense. I don't know that she was supposed to be psychotic or anything, but then her her uncle was a crazy person. She she was. I think she might actually be the character <coughs> that made me realize I can't judge this by any comic book meter because yeah. Silver Saint Cloud is not exactly a particularly well fleshed out. That's character. who that was. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I couldn't remember. Yeah, she's not a particularly well fleshed out character. She has one character trait in the comics and that is that she is a good person she is the person that bruce wayne should <laughs> want to be with that is the only character trait silver saint cloud has yeah and then she showed up and she was like queen bee you know high school you know that whole thing i was like wow you you had one job <laughs> so yeah yeah and, and and she's like she's she's like the manipulator and she's uh uh, is seductive and. Do you know what her job is in the comics? I I don't remember. She's a socialite who organizes charity events. Yeah, of course. And so, of course, she's got to be the niece of a guy who pretends to be that, but <laughs> is actually trying to bring down the Wayans and is of the order of Saint Dumas, which, for some reason, that's all they want to do. And yeah, well, don't you know all um, all uh, centuries old religious orders start in the 1800s with outcast <laughs> Americans? Do you think <laughs> do you think that they will ever line that up or connect it up at all with the Court of Owls? Like, how do we have these two secret societies? I thought they would, but they just kind of eject all that stuff with Azrael. Like they haven't yet. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard to imagine that they will now since they've killed him twice. Yeah, he is and dead they now, really right? Killed him the second time. Yeah, and, and like nothing left, right? Oh man, what if he comes back as just like a finger, <laughs> just like a killer finger, just inching along? See, this is what I'm talking about. That's possible. <laughs> it is in it this is show. Totally anything possible. is possible because it it does get to that that like like that weird of a place. It does get to that like like uncomfortable uh, uncomfortably bizarre and strange and out there like the spirit like this is the this there, is the spirit there TV could show. literally be there could literally be like a finger or something left of him and someone loses a finger and they graft his finger on and then his personality takes over that could happen sure and then the next episode they could decide that something else happened and forget all about that yeah because not only is it a show that will just say anything is possible and sweep it under the rug and like, like it's just and, and now we have that like you know suddenly superpowers but also we'll retcon things yeah 
I think we retcon things in this show. Even that's um, kind of hard to tell sometimes. Yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. We undo things. Yeah. I don't know if we retcon things. Yeah, which like in my head is a you know in, in is is a smarter incontinuity way for a writer to retcon a thing. But you're right, like like I'm not sure that we're just straight up pretending like things have never happened. You know, if this show keeps going the way it's going, and ends and has a perfect continuity, and they never <laughs> actually retcon anything, it'll be amazing. Yeah, no, no, that that would that they, would be they amazing. only build on what's there. The only thing stranger to imagine than when and, and we'll go ahead and start predicting stuff. The only thing stranger to imagine than how you could get weirder and more out there than this last season is to imagine this going to a season five or a season seven. Yeah. I just can't even Well, here's the thing. I don't get the this impression show could that be this show is on scraping the moon by at that by point. Teeth. It could be anything. I'm sorry, what? I don't get the impression that this show is scraping by by its teeth. I don't either, and it should be. Just looking at it, you can't imagine how... Like, like, did like Fox... Legends of Tomorrow might be canceled. We knew before this season ended, it was renewed for season three. Did, did Fox executives just say, have at it, it's Batman, we know it'll sell? I mean, they, yeah. weren't, they weren't sure enough about it to give it a full order for a season. They gave it a more than you often get for a first season on Fox order where it got like 16 instead of 12 or 13 and then they gave it even more. And they clearly had too much confidence in this show in that first season. And so did Netflix. Yeah. We've talked about that, right? Where Netflix paid like a pretty penny to get that show. Yeah. I bet they're regretting that. I wonder what streaming numbers are. Well, yeah, and I mean, they don't, they don't divulge that, so... Yeah, yeah. No, I just mean, like, I wonder, does this show do well on Netflix? Like, I assume that, like, Flash and Arrow do well on Netflix. Yeah, they definitely do. Does this show? I don't know. It uh, should. So, the first, the first prediction I'll throw out there, uh, you alluded to earlier. I think, at one point, th I thought that this sounded like, a really silly out there thing, but I totally could kind of see this show do it, and now I think it's almost inevitable. I think Jim Gordon gets back together with Barbara. I think that happens, and I think they get married for real. I don't know about getting married. Maybe, yeah. I think, I think it happens. Yeah, I think you're right. How else do you, The only other thing that could possibly happen, and actually, this might be more plausible, but again, anything's possible. The only thing that seems more likely maybe would be for her to be totally redeemed in Jim Gordon's eyes and get killed and then he has a baby with someone else and names her Barbara after her. Okay. I'm going to make a counter pitch. Not a counter pitch. Going off the idea that they that they'd get back together. Jim has his niece Barbara come and stay with him because sometimes cause <laughs> and sometimes, she's from and she's from Britain and doesn't have an accent. Well, sometimes she's his niece and sometimes she's his daughter, depending on what continuity. I'm going to say his niece, Barbara, comes and stays with them. And she's either bullied at school or, or like, mugged or something. And then the crazy side of Barbara is allowed to have a, like, good outlet in, like, training her to defend herself and setting her up as Batgirl. And her name just happens to be Barbara. Yeah. So they're both called Barbara and she only wears purple. Well, it's weird in the comics, too. Well, that's true. That his wife is named Barbara and his niece slash slash daughter. When is it when has it been his niece outside of Batman and Robin, though? Um, is that a thing in other continuities? Yeah, that's the only one I know of. Um, I mean, I mean, like Barbara Gordon was invented for the 60s show as his daughter. I'm almost positive I wish Steve was here because now I'm going to sound stupid. I'm almost positive sometimes she's his niece and not his daughter. I don't feel like I've ever seen that anywhere, but that doesn't mean anything because as we I all think know. that might be the way it is in year one. We've both read a fraction of what Steve's read. Yeah, I think that might be the way it is in year one because in year one he has a son who later comes back with Scott Snyder. 
Because I've always right. Because 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 I've always heard people really perplexed by the whole Barbara's uh, uh, the name of his wife and also the name of his daughter. And I'm like, why is that weird? Can't you name your daughter after your wife? And like, I think she's his niece sons. in the animated series too, right? Yes. No, no, she's his niece. No, 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 no. no. In the is she for series? sure his daughter? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I just I don't know. Something in my head is telling me sometimes she's his niece. I've only seen that in Batman and Robin. Personally, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened in other places. Well, and she's not even Jim Gordon's niece. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, she's Alfred's. Yeah, she's Alfred's in that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, you of got course. me all turned around because you started talking about Alfred's a thing that... Alfred's niece, Barbara, may also show up in this show. Yes, that could have... Actually, that might be more plausible, and then that's... More likely, and then that's who would end up being being Batgirl. And of course, she's also much older than Bruce Wayne. I'm I'm gonna predict yeah. that in this season <laughs> we get at least a stretch of episodes where, whether through diabolical like scientific means or something, I'm gonna get I'm gonna guess we have a dark Alfred arc. There's gonna be an arc where Alfred turns on Bruce for some reason through some means. I could see it, and I mean, he doesn't see. I don't know how to talk about the show because I want to say he doesn't always <laughs> seem like the most mentally stable person. But then name a person in that show that you trust, like Bullock. implicitly. I trust Bullock. I don't trust Bullock to not be an idiot. Okay, I was gonna say he's dumb, but he's honest and consistent. And he, yeah, and he seems like the most down to earth, real person person. Yeah, in that show, right? Like even Lucius Fox looked like it looks like he could kind of lose it at some point. <laughs> and he's played as kind of straight laced, but I don't know if you had this. His first couple appearances, I really didn't trust him. I kind of expected him to be a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he could still be a bad guy. Like, like not really. Like I didn't figure they would do that. But something about his performance, because again, that's a guy who seems to kind of know what TV show he's in, and so. He's, he's really shifty-eyed, and he looks like a guy that you would cast as a, a, a smarmy, like, you, you're you supposed to trust him, but he... he Let's but, call it now, Lucius is working for the Court of the Owls. It, maybe he is. I don't, I don't know. He may be a Talon. It, it's possible. I think they'll probably end up playing him as, you know, totally altruistic and the good guy and uh, kind of the stand-in for... Uh, Thomas Wayne, but maybe maybe not. Uh, Thomas Wayne could turn out to have been a member of the court of the Court of the Owls. Thomas Wayne is almost certainly tied to the court in some way. Yeah, that's almost a given at this point. And 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 I and I said it. We we tried to record this for like three minutes and that cut out. Right. But I said it there. I guarantee you, if this show gets to keep going and has like a good long run, at some point Thomas Wayne shows up and Bruce talks to him. Thomas Wayne is not dead. I, I mean, it, yeah, it's certainly possible. Uh, maybe both of them. Maybe they faked their deaths. Uh, I love the idea you threw out in your uh, crisis vlog. Where you said, uh, maybe the Bruce Wayne that comes out of the truck at the end is the real Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I, I have another idea. This one is so dumb, I think it might happen. <laughs> oh, let me ask you this real quick. Is it true that Jerome was in the truck? I couldn't make out anyone in that truck except for Bruce and Killer Croc. I couldn't either, and somebody in your comments was like, was like uh, Jerome was in the truck. And oh, I didn't see that comment. I wouldn't put that past them. That that wouldn't surprise me at all, because I mean, like, they... They came up with a way to bring back every person that has ever died if they want to. And someone who hasn't died yet. What do you mean? Well, Bruce Wayne. They brought Bruce Wayne back before they killed him. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. They, that, okay. That's clearly okay. a different Jerome character. Factor into my, my so dumb it's probably going to yeah, happen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think other Bruce Wayne becomes the Joker. Oh, my God. That's great. Tell me it's not possible. Well, um, and what's hilarious about that is that other Bruce Wayne he needs to just, like, go watch a lot of TV and look at graffiti all over the city because, yeah. because like, 
uh, the, everybody is becoming the Joker, apparently, or at least they were at the end of that I feel episode. I thought this was calling him calling him other Bruce Wayne. He he's he's Nightwing hair Bruce Wayne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or he's like Tommy from Power Rangers, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Um, that that's the big one I thought of when we first started talking about this. I was like, I have one that's so crazy. I think it's gonna. I think it might be real. I I'm I'm calling it. Other or Nightwing hair Bruce Wayne is gonna be the Joker. Is this the beginning of every major character in this show gets to play a crazy version of themselves, even though they're all already kind of crazy? Because we just did it with Jim Gordon. Gordon. And yeah. now we're doing it with Bruce Wayne. We're like, well, we haven't got like, like, like his his performance has been more or less for this show comparatively subdued. I'm I'm not I'm not talking about our favorite speech. You know the speech I'm talking about, Eric. Yes. <laughs> when, when he goes. When he goes, it was his friend. <laughs> that's, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's, that's not, not right. right. That is as good as Shiny Shoe's Mother of God. And what I love about it is they kept showing it in the previously oh, on Gotham. I know. How do you? How does anybody come into that show having not watched it for a while or never seen it and see the opening and see that and not be like, "Holy crap! What is this?" <laughs> Whoa! They gave that kid that dialogue. Do you think? Do you think this show will have like a spawn effect where like people that come in late will think everything before it had to have made sense and logically have built to this point? Yes, I think so. <laughs> what I am more fascinated to see than anything is how this show is remembered a decade after it. I'm gonna bet, kind of like Smallville. Where there are fans that legitimately think it's a great television show, and everyone else remembers it as a lark. Yeah, but, like, Smallville wasn't baffling in the way this is baffling. That's true. You know, like, like it had, even, even much more so than Gotham, it had... It at least had, like, repeat offenses, where, like, they just kept doing the same dumb things. This show's all over the place. Yeah, and... and it's Gotham... repeat offenses are doing crazy things. Gotham turned very quickly into this this very difficult to describe thing. And we, we, like, like, like Smallville had the problem, of course, of not being exactly sure what kind of show it wanted to be. Like, it was weird in the sense of, of, of some, like, counterintuitive stuff. Like, okay, so you're going to do a, a Superman show, but it's going to have a horror bent? Okay. Yeah, and it had that weird. It, it of course had that weird thing of it went on too long, and then it became a different show. But we still called it Smallville, even though we hardly ever went there. Yeah. But do you think, uh, do you think that will happen? Do you think we will get to a point where it's just Bruce Wayne traveling the world, training, but we still call it Gotham? <laughs> we still call it Gotham. No, because uh, because I think that it will continue to have twelve subplots going on at the same time forever. I think it will always mostly, majoritively, be in Gotham. You can't call them sub subplots if they just end randomly. You remember? No, you remember that's when the true. Penguin that's was a main character. True. Yeah, yeah, you remember that? And we keep like checking in with them, but having these big giant gaps where I have no idea what he did in between. Well, but checking in with him is just like him being like, "Oh, your girlfriend almost uh, almost got killed," and then he shows up with a bazooka and they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Asriel, that's checking in with the penguin. Uh, in the last episode, checking in with the penguin <laughs> was, was was them showing up with uh, with mini guns yeah. and him going fish Mooney. <laughs> no, I know, I, I know, I know. Yeah, you remember back when we thought he was a he was a legitimately decent massive manipulator. He's still maybe the best actor on this show. I think like, he's pretty good. Yeah, he, he him and Riddler. If this is a serious show, they can keep playing it exactly the way they're playing it. They can, and it works. Yeah, no matter what kind of show it is. Yeah, it works. Yeah, they have it, and Bullet kind of gets away with his performance no matter what kind of show it is. Yeah, he but ought to be the thing that's Donald grounding kind of it. Always like that. If they cared about grounding it, he would be the thing that would that would help to ground it. You know, um, I, I've compared the show to '60s Batman a lot, and. 
I think you're right. I think it has more in common with Power Rangers. <laughs> but but uh, but the 60 Batman comparison is really interesting because um, that's a show that, of course, uh, the characters in the show don't realize how totally goofy and silly a universe it is. But the actors are very tongue in cheek, and it knows it knows exactly what it is. Um, this show may sort of have that now. I'm not sure. But something else it has in common with that show is that. Despite the fact that I I can never tell if anybody is actually watching the show, because like I don't talk to people that watch the show. I don't know anyone that watches the show that but, aren't part of Geek Volusion. But Eric, every big actor on television wants to be on this show. Do they want to be on the show, or do they end or they, up on this? Show? I don't know. I mean, they, they, they okay. So they get like because like. You're right. There's a difference because '60s Batman like people would campaign to get to be on that on that show as a guest right. villain. Um. But it sure feels like that. I mean, like, they, they're they there. They seem to all have a really good time. They seem to want to be there. <laughs> um, you know, B.D. Wong was, like, thrilled to get that role. Well, but he's not a huge actor. I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying that people seem to like to do that to do that show. And he's also quite good. He Yeah, he is really good. And a lot of people were like, I don't know. He doesn't... He's not what I think of when I think... And then, and then he was, like... I don't know. It, it, it's 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 going to be hard if if anybody else plays him after this, not to think. Well, that was like that was the the first one. That's kind of definitive. Like I I totally, I totally yeah. He see totally feels like Hugo Strange. Hugo Strange, yeah. In the, I mean, like a a really really out there version. Do you think Hugo Strange is already, of course, a a, a crazy you know nut job and and is out there, uh, but. And his performance could work in a more straight show. Um, his problem is is the way he's written. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I don't know what he's about and why he... Like, you know, by the end, it seems like he's doing his mad science stuff because the Court of the Owls hired him to. Yeah. I guess. And he's just experimenting, and that's fun for him. I guess. I mean, we don't know but how a lot working. of... The man doesn't have to work for a secret cabal. He could get he, he could get all of the all like he should go to the military. Yeah. What with what he's done, he could just take all of the research funding. Just all of it. Because he's he's doing everything that we want to do, and he could probably do he could he could cure cancer. I'm saying it. Hugo Strange could cure he, cancer. He could, he could do anything. He's just choosing not to. Yeah, he could build the Genesis device and that. terraform the moon and make another Earth. He could do anything. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I really, I really enjoyed him. Do you think he'll come back somehow? Of course. Naturally, and I feel like you could say that for every character. Like, you think that person will come back? Like, I didn't think it was possible. Asriel should be a Asriel's a pile of dust or something. I forget how exactly he died, but he might come back again. Bazooka. Oh, that's right. That's right. We watch him dust. Somehow. You, you know, you're talking about Donald Logan and his performance. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I was like, well, that's kind of how he is and everything. He gives the exact same performance both as Johnny Blaze's best friend in Ghost Rider and Frost's main minion in Blade. <laughs> and I keep forgetting that's the same guy, but it is. And he's perfect for Bullock. When they cast him, I was like, that's the perfect guy for Bullock. And I was right. He is. And he's still my favorite character and probably a lot of people's favorite character. He's my favorite character. I mean, he's great. And, and, and the most consistent. And he has a lot of lines in that show that I swear have to be ad-libs. <laughs> There's a lot of places where I'm like, that is... That's too... I wonder if the scene in the finale where he asks Gordon questions that don't come to anything. Do you think he just ad-libbed that? Where he's like, well, no, I would know this. He just, he has these turns of phrase that are so unique to him and that show's not written that well. Yeah. Um, but anyway, what, so... so what do you think's gonna happen to, what do you think's gonna happen to Bullock? Yeah, let's get back to predicting because we haven't talked about this for a while so it's hard not to just sit here and review the show. I, I bet you Bullock has some kind of fall this season. Yeah, I, know, but it, I bet you he gets kicked off the force for something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I what I what I kind of imagine he secretly has superpowers. He didn't know, <laughs> but like, but like, here's what's gonna happen. Yeah, he's, he's gonna kicked off the force. He's gonna like go on like a bender, 
and like he's gonna stumble drunk and he's gonna like shoot lightning out of his hands or something and be like huh that's that's gonna happen and there'll be, like, an eight-episode arc where he has that, and then he'll lose it, and then we'll never bring it up again. <laughs> and and he'll, he'll be, he'll be a, a, a police detective again. Yeah, I kind of imagine the, his running the force becoming official, and they're running with that for, like, half a season. Yeah, until they get bored of it. And that, yeah, because that's what that's what they do in this show, is there's no progression. It's just, what do we want to do for a while? And then, and like... Some of the CW shows do the same thing, but in much more of, like, a formulaic by-the-numbers way. Like, this show, just it has mood swings, this show. <laughs> it's it's fat. Like, I feel like it is a, 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 you know, you know, Gotham is a living and breathing entity. And you just look at an episode and you're like, it's bipolar. You're like, you could be writing or you could be an undigested bit of gravy. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, like like Gotham is definitely the main character beyond you know any of the actual characters, but not in the way that they that they think it is. Cause it's funny, cause this used to be a show about corruption. You notice how we never talk about that anymore? Well, cause no one's corrupt. Everyone's a secret society. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like like what like where did that go? Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, but I, I think I think Bullock is gonna have a larger role than he did a lot of this last season. At least for the first couple episodes, especially if Gordon stays gone for the first couple episodes. And then He's... of course Gordon will will cement back as the main police guy like nothing ever happened. It happened in this episode with fake Gordon. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and I still I still say that every every character that's not a, like a bad like supposed to be a air quote bad guy character is going to have some doppelganger. Well, uh Fish Moon is going to take over the core of the owls. Oh, that's Because a... that character is just too cool for school and she's going to show up and she's going to take over the core of the owls. I got to tell you I I 100% agree with you about the that that way. And I mean like it's hard to call anything a misstep in this show, but that, that, that I'm very confident in saying was a misstep in bringing yeah. her back. Yeah. She's so, the only person I think is bad. Like, everyone else is kind of in this show and they're giving, like, weird performances. She's bad in, like, a regular TV show bad. Yeah, and it's not... I mean, I mean, I don't dislike the actress as much as you do. Um, I, I, I liked her okay early on when I thought I could take the show more seriously. I, even when I saw the pilot, she was, and I liked the pilot quite a bit. Yeah. She was the one thing that stuck out to me as I was like, she's in a different show and she's bad in that show. Whatever so sh show she is in, she's bad in it. Well, do you think, do you think in, in heightening it, because I guess obviously, let me reiterate, th this from the very beginning is a really heightened show, of course. Yeah. But, but do you think that maybe uh, part of it was that performance and that the show, like, like came too far in that direction, like 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 that she kind of set the tone for it. Maybe. Do you think that's partly how we got to this place? Was that no? Performance? Because because the show gets ahead of her once she goes to that weird island yeah. and has an arc that goes nowhere for like four episodes in season one. I'm just wondering if tonally she didn't set she didn't set that a little bit. Because in the pilot, she seems almost too over the top for that show. Yeah. And then eventually there's nothing too over the top for that show. Yeah, she's not too over the top now. No. But I'm, I am still find her really tedious. Yeah. And we still keep following her as if she's a protagonist as opposed to an antagonistic character. And I, and I don't understand that. Yeah, well, and I think part Even of it is Even more so that... than Penguin. Like, I know that we linger with Penguin a lot, but he never feels like he's supposed to be sympathetic. There's something about the way they do Fish Mooney. But Penguin's a real character. Well, I always uh, like... Fish Mooney doesn't... Like, I think that's part of why she feels tedious is we're not even pretending to go on the journey to where Fish Mooney is in the Batman mythology because she's not part of the Batman mythology. Yeah, Like, at least why... with Penguin and Riddler, it's like, well, eventually they're going to become Penguin and Riddler. Which is why early on, yeah, and at this point, I, I'm, let me say, I'm incapable of looking at the show as a Batman thing anymore. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think about it that way in the sense that I know that that mythology is informing it, but it's it's this other thing that is informed by Batman mythology. It really and, shouldn't say based on comics created by uh, Bill Finger and Bob Kane. It should say it lightly inspired by. Because they're going to have... Well, and then some characters, they play kind of straight and borrow the backgrounds and mythology entirely you know, from that. I mean, they're, they're, they're Mr. Freeze is Mr. Freeze, except he's a serial killer before he's Mr. Freeze for no good reason. And, and he, instead of having no emotions, he has all the emotions. Yeah. He's yeah. a ball of rage. I, I, I liked the point you made about that. Um, but it, it is, we just got to represent everything we've ever seen in a Batman comic and two seasons in, can you believe the sheer number of characters that we have already represented. I, I can't believe we have... Tommy like, Elliot was in this show? Like, like Court, of, Court of Owls is like this new idea, but that is supposed to foundationally be part of Gotham. So that makes sense to bring in Asriel. Asriel? That early? We got Asriel two seasons in. Bruce and Wayne's I'm, still a kid. And I'm not even saying that early just because it's before Batman. I just like... Like, of all the things... That you could do, you're like you're not waiting. You're not waiting on that. Like there's just there's. It seems like their philosophy is if we feel like if it seems like fun to do this character this week, that's who that's who we're gonna throw in there. They are not concerned about running out of stuff. All right, and so, I mean it is Batman, so there there is plenty of stuff to do. Sure, uh, but anyway, well we're still we're still reviewing this before we're predicting it. Season three, yeah. do we do we pick up? Right after the end of season two, where these these villains have scattered, or do you think season three starts with like just them? They're established, like Killer Croc's a gang lord and whatever. That's like, a really I, good point. What, didn't we get a little bit of a time jump between one and two? I think so. I forget. Th there was so much packed in that season. It feels like I watched three seasons. Yeah, and the beginning of season two is so far away from the end of season two. Uh, yeah, like like it it really does kind of have at least that heroes thing where it's like it's in two chapters. And yeah. they even kind of titled it that way because they made a really big deal out of like Rise of the Villains and Wrath of the Villains. So like yeah. they, they they already separated it out that way, and you have you know the Galavan section, and then you have the Hugo Strange section. What villains do you want to see think we'll see? See, immediately it's difficult not to, like, go to things that we've seen already and go, oh yeah, that's right, we've already done that. Um, what, first of all, what the heck has happened to Harvey Dent? Yeah, where has he been? I haven't seen Harvey Dent. He was in, like, one or two episodes this season. Oh, yeah, and didn't they make a big deal of making him, like, part of the main cast this season? I don't remember that, but I have wondered where he where he is, and it's weird that we're really taking our time with him becoming Two Face. <laughs> but we already have Mr. Freeze in costume. We have Clayface. We have Scarecrow, and et cetera, et cetera, like, et cetera. And it's not like we are building the relationship between him and Bruce. It they're too no. far apart in age. Yeah, I don't know that they've hardly met each other. He might, he might I, be. A, I think they did. He might be a decoy. There might be, there might be a Harvey Dent Jr. Well, and and see, that's that's one of my big predictions is that maybe we talked about this earlier. That I I think we're gonna see at least one, if not a few of those, uh, <laughs> where it's like that's not real. Like I think we could do it with Gordon. I'll go that far. I think Jim, I think this Jim Gordon could not be Jim Gordon. It's true. I think that's I, possible. I, yeah. I don't think they'll actually do that the more I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. I, no, I think they might do it and keep the same actor. I think they might be twins. Yeah, see, that's, yep, that's where I was going to go. Yeah, because we haven't done that cliche reveal yet. I really hope, I really hope Cavalier's in this new season. <laughs> Cavalier's my favorite Batman villain nobody cares about. Yeah. Like, uh, like, yeah, you know, more villains. Clocking. Uh, we need except people care about Clock King. Well, we need. The, well, and the thing is, Arrow gave us a really good Clock King. Yeah. So it's it's hard to want to see their Clock King, except the one in Arrow is 
is uh, is is scary and somewhat unhinged. Like he would actually fit pretty well in this world. Um, how do you go bigger than that? He controls time. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't think we'd ever get to superpowers. We've already done that. We are way past superpowers. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Gotham will have Dead time man travel. Can, can I throw that out there? Gotham will have time travel. <laughs> that w- Dead man could show up and possess oh my Harvey God. Bullock, and I would not be surprised. It's just, it's inevitable. The, the, the time do you travel think? In Gotham. Do you think Bruce Wayne killed his parents? Do you think he's going to go <laughs> back in time? And they'll and do the Flash the thing man. where he goes back in time and tries to stop it, and then is like, no, I, I can't stop it. Or, or we'll rebirth it. <laughs> He'll, he'll go back in he'll time. He'll go back in time, and then he'll find a bloody button on the ground. No, no, no. He'll go back in time to, to be the trigger man because his parents have to die for everything to happen, and then Night Owl just stops him, like in the <laughs> beginning of the Watchmen movie. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, I will say they won't go that far. <laughs> that that won't I, happen. Honestly, I, Bruce Wayne may kill his parents. That might happen. <laughs> Do you really think they could go there? Now that I'm thinking about it, I wouldn't be surprised if Bruce Wayne enters into some kind of virtual reality si- simulator where he has to murder his parents. Yeah, well, let's just remember that we do we do have a physical trigger man. That's true. And that guy probably wasn't lying. Although I'll say I was always suspicious. He he might come back as a talent. Oh, someone's going to be a talent, right? Somebody like has someone to be a, that's yeah. part of the cast has to be a talent. That we've either killed off or will kill off. Maybe, it might be Butch. Uh, Butch might be a talent. Yeah, or the uh, or the police captain. Oh yeah, no, he's dead. No, I know, but he could be brought back to life as. Oh, a oh, right, right, right. Like anybody, we yeah. That's the thing is that is that you got to look at people we've killed off now too because we could bring back anybody. It could be Sarah Essen. Yeah, sure. We wasted her. And she, she, yeah, she was completely wasted. Uh, where's Montoya? Where's Alan? They, 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 they moved to like a parallel <laughs> earth. They were like Fly Gotham is the show that they thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> they moved to that Gotham Central show everybody really wanted. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh my uh, god, that's great. Yeah, like they, like they just they just fell off the earth, and and Steve complained a lot and laughed constantly through first season about how their names kept showing up in episodes they weren't in. <laughs> I mean, like the actors' names. I and... wouldn't be surprised if they came back. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Renee R- Renee Montoya didn't in. come back as the question. Well, and what's and what's funny is we the police department seems to always be really short on cops. <laughs> it's just it's always really strange like that like like uh bullock just stepping up like well somebody's got to be the cat yeah that's not how that works and since this season jumped so ha- so far above last season like with superpowers and stuff i'm saying next season we get etrigan you know what some i think kind I, of i think etrigan, etrigan i think etrigan is a real possibility oh i i do too yeah, I'm with you. I think next season we have Black Magic stuff, and we have Etrigan. Have we done Black Mask yet? Yes. Didn't we? Oh, yeah, that we did. Like season one, First right? season. Yeah, he was actually kind of interesting. But it's sort of like a proto-Black Mask, like some of those other proto-villains have been. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. We just no. go straight to villains. Yeah, we're not even concerned with that now. Um, they're They're just... Do you think... You think we'll go back to some of those like like kid scarecrow or or do we just ignore it? Do we I'd just... be real surprised if we didn't. Um especially because I'm surprised by nothing in this show. Well, wouldn't you think that this show would want to uh, move ahead with an established rogues gallery at some point? Yeah, but so many of those ones that they did in season 1 were like proto villains. I wonder if we just kind of cut those loose. I don't know. Yeah, or have them be the inspiration for some other for for like the real version that we bring in now because like like when that happened with a lot of those scarecrow, uh, we we were thinking oh okay so that person 
we won't we wouldn't see for a lot of years and then after Bruce Wayne becomes Batman then they would either you know pass the baton or inspire someone or whatever uh I wouldn't put it past the show now that we've done straight up Victor Victor Freish in this show I love that by the way <laughs> um that uh <laughs> would you like Freish with that that we would uh that we would just it's like a young Frankenstein joke that they just like didn't make yeah yeah uh but 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 I can't but I can't help but think that no, we'll go ahead and do that now. Even though at first it was with the intention of eventually we'd have a Batman. We're also... I I'm, still I'm say this is not a Batman show. I'm guaranteeing this season we have at least a proto-Batman costume that Bruce wears and goes out to fight crime in some way. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love it could how... be like Kick-Ass where like, he gets beat up and like he's like, I'm never going to do that again. But I guarantee you in this season... He will wear a costume that is black with a cape, and he will fight crime. I think he he starts to get trained by someone who's not Alfred in this season, but he's still in Gotham. The Cavalier. I think it's. I, I think they'll bring in Shiva. Yeah, they probably have they have they brought in Shiva. Have we had a Shiva? I feel like we've had. A Shiva oh my god! Before. I mean, I can't even predict things <laughs> with this show. They've done every character I've ever heard of in Batman. Just all these super. Oh obscure... man, we had Alfred sword fighting. We could Alf- We could have Alfred sword fight the Cavalier. <laughs> um, I I say obscure. I mean obscure to you know general public. Just all these characters that a lot of people have never seen anything. I mean, like I got I got to give the show you know props I guess for having live action versions of a lot of characters we've we've never had before. But couldn't we have done that in an actual Batman show? Yeah. Um, you gotta love that. Uh, so I was gonna make the prediction about a costume. And with too. this production value and the way they're going with costumes, this one hundred percent could have just been a Gotham Central show. Yeah, or a straight up Batman show. They've got the money for it. They've got the. They, they've got the. But, and, but we and they wouldn't especially get a Batman the, show with Batman movies. No, I, I know, I know. But I'm just saying that that it, it certainly wasn't their. Uh, inability to make it look good that would have precluded them from doing that. Um, it is really unfortunate that their production designer passed away. Oh, I didn't even know that. Uh, there, there's a, there's an in memory of. Uh, at the oh, end I of saw the finale, that. And I looked that up, and uh, I forget what else he's worked on. But that was, uh, but that was a production designer that's been working forever and uh, who's like really well loved in Hollywood. And uh, I don't know if the show might lose some of its production value because they don't have him anymore. Or just like 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 some of, you know, the coolness of what it looks like. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it's been on for two years and they'll try to follow in his footsteps, I'm sure. So we may not notice. Like, it might just be important for, for the look of that show that he designed it in the first place. What I want, but I don't think we'll get, yeah. is, is I want Schoolyard Bully Bane. <laughs> That's awesome. Who just fights Bruce Wayne? And see, then it makes you just wish that we had had like a live action version of that cartoon high school show that never happened. Yeah, like yeah, like Little Batman. Yeah, because <laughs> that would have been great too. Do you think they'll ever do anything with with Poison Ivy? She's just kind of there, and she keeps coming back. She's gonna do something at some point. Yeah, I don't know what something rather. Well, see, the thing with Poison Ivy that's tricky <laughs> is that. Um, or I guess prickly because she's plants, huh? Um, <laughs> huh? <laughs> she's uh, her. She's a character that's known so much for her like seductiveness. Yeah, and she's twelve. Well, and I mean, same thing with Selena, but she's at least I guess a little older than that. Okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. So Poison Ivy's going to get taken in by someone, some rich family that's going, because she's, she's kind of weird and the dirty. Elliot's? Yeah. She's going to get taken in by someone that's going to like groom her and train her and make her start dressing nice and going to set her on the path to being the seductress. Yeah, you're right. Because anything like the Poison Ivy we know from the comics couldn't, couldn't be couldn't get there solely from being a, a street urchin. Yeah. And also she, she has to get educated at some point. 
I'm, I'm also going to guess... I'm not saying that we make her straight up like the comics, because obviously the show can do anything it wants to. I'm just saying, if they if they ever decided to go there, that's what they would have to do. You sound you sound like the show is like a strong, independent person. Like, it can do whatever it wants to do. <laughs> well, it can. It can get away with anything. That's the thing. I mean, like, Fox is keeping it on no matter what it does. Okay, now, we don't know if this season will be like if season three will be like last season where it's kind of two seasons in one. Yeah. Right. So I can't begin to tell you what, like the big bad or the, th- or the, or the main threat or the, well, I, well, I, I guess, the owls. I guess it's the, yeah, okay. So it's, so but it's, the question is, is the yeah. core of the owls, the first half of the season threat or the whole season? Here's my prediction. So we have the court of the owls and they're, they're the big, you know, they're all the rich people. They're ruling everything. I think Bruce is going to be the one to take them down with an army of street urchin kids that all live underground and like don't play by the the like rich societal rules that the Court of the Owls is able to manipulate. They might do that. I could, it's going to be like the Warriors. It's going to be like the Warriors versus rich people. I could also see almost an adaptation of Zero Year. Oh, where everything gets like overgrown. And where Enigma takes over the city, and 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 we have guys in, in in scary mouth masks that we just never show again or ever address. Yeah, and where thirteen year old Bruce Wayne fights a lion oh. and rides a motorcycle. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but no, I can see that. Uh, yeah. When I said I can't, I, I'm not sure who the big bad is. I I was not assuming that we would necessarily go full on Court of the Owls right away. Like I I could really see it taking its time and really spreading that out forever like they did uh like like they have who murdered the Waynes. I can see them being in the background for two more seasons. Oh man. They may not okay. do that, especially because they made such a big deal out of you know you know Enigma being like who who controls Wayne Enterprises, but then we keep playing up the mystery of who killed the Waynes and then not talking about it for episodes at a time and then coming back to it. I'm just saying I could sort of see Court of the Owls being like that. But if they, but if you're right and they and they really do something with that this season, if they split it into, couldn't you see the first half being monsters? Yeah, that came out of the truck, and the second half we finally get to Court of the Owls. Okay, I think you might be right that we might do zero year because this is how crazy the show is. <laughs> I think. <laughs> We could end, like, the first half of the season with, like, the city overgrown and, like, all of that stuff from Zero Year. And then first episode next season takes place the next day and everything looks normal. (laughs) Yeah, of course. Well, and as you have said uh, on on, on, on your vlogs, uh, we never have any sense of how much time has passed in the show. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Dracula shows up. That's great. And I'm only half sarcastic about that. No, that's great. I can see it. I can see actual vampires in the show. Sure. Oh, there's got to be vampires. And, and yeah. you know what's going to happen? <laughs> Either Selena or Bruce is going to get bit. This this might be the Selena episode. Bruce gets bit and she has to do vampire stuff to like unvampire him. Oh my God. That's just, that's fantastic. I actually legitimately want that in the show. I think that I sounds... Just, fantastic i also want this show to let me know that they know what they are and just have a scene where someone's going up a building and the windows open and it's like brian cranston that's awesome and (laughs) equally famous tv personalities the guy from mad men i can't think of his name um but yeah i just want that can I, can I tell you something else I'd, I'd, I'd love the show production-wise to do? Build a larger standing set for Wayne Manor. Let it be more than one room. <laughs> and also build enough more of the cave that we can be sure that it's not just a little cave like Cubby Hole. Yeah. Because I love that I their hope it bat stays cave... A cubby hole. And he puts a computer in there, and it's just a computer and a chair, and that's it. And that's the bat cave. Like I love that their bat cave is is so consistent with what their Wayne Manor has been. Because <laughs> people came that first season kept complaining about how it's like you guys never go. It feels like one room. It never feels like you're in a mansion. 
I'm also going to predict that there's going to be a scene where Bruce needs to get from Wayne uh, Enterprises to somewhere else in the city quickly. And Lucius goes, like, your father needed to do this. And we just have the, the, the tunnel bullet from Batman Forever. Yes. That'd be awesome. That has to happen. And then while he's in the tunnel bullet, Lucius Fox can talk to him. And you see, like, Lucius Fox's face reflected off his face. <laughs> I also want... You know what? I want them to just straight up just decide that they're in continuity with the 89 through Batman and Robin films. <laughs> That's hilarious. Do you think it's... And some people have suggested this, and usually uh, in, very, very, in a very irritable sort of way, but expecting the show to maybe do this... Do you think they might do the same, like, uh, pass the torch inspirational thing that they've done with some of the villains and just straight up say that Batman was Thomas Wayne's idea? He's kind of already Thomas Wayne's idea. Yeah? But I mean, I like, mean, I mean, I mean, like, I go had all the way to the bat like... motif being his, like, maybe even he was Batman. Like, I could totally see them doing that. Yeah, that's... And... And that's and that's when Thomas Wayne comes back is we meet the original Batman. <laughs> yeah, or they do, or they or, or they do that cliche thing where he talks to him on a videotape or something. Yeah, no, I think this show is going to have Bruce meet his dad again. I think that's going to happen because we still don't know. Do we still have any idea what exactly Thomas Wayne was doing with the cave and why that was his secret sanctum? My understanding from season one was that he was, like, fighting corporate corruption. Secretly. I still think one of the funniest things, uh, one, one of the funniest contrivances in that show overall so far is Bruce Wayne takes a sledgehammer to the computer and then the rest of the season Lucius Fox is trying to fix it. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I think we're going to continue... Just to spread out the mystery as far as we can possibly spread it. Like, ten minutes later, oh, man, I really would like the information on that computer I just sledgehammered up. I think we're going to continue to uh, uh, DC's just continuance of just taking and ruining Morrison stories. Um, <laughs> and because we just like to keep having secret like organizations, I think Leviathan's going to show up. Leviathan's probably going to be some kind of other secret organization. Professor Pig will probably show up. Oh, that sounds uh, almost inevitable. Professor Pig or, the, yeah. or Leviathan? Yeah, well, Professor Pig, and I could totally see Leviathan. Spiral too, just, will probably show up, too. Where you just keep throwing probably, out uh, all of these secret societies and spy organizations. and Yeah, yeah, I bet you Spiral shows. I guarantee you Spiral shows up as a spy organization that presents themselves to someone, probably Gordon or Bruce, as being like fighting the core of the owls, but then turns out to also be evil. Do you think we introduce the Drakes like we introduced the Graysons? Um Cause I'm a little I surprised kind of that we haven't we had the comic book thing of just being like, oh hey Did you know we have neighbors right there? <laughs> Like, I'm a little surprised there hasn't been a reference yet to uh, Tim Drake or Jason Todd. Yeah. Like, I really, I just kind of expect that to happen at some point. Um, oh, oh, I, I've got I've got another one. I also could see Cassandra Cain too early. And her dad. Yeah. Yeah, no, if not, I, gar our, our, I keep saying guarantee. I can't guarantee anything. I bet you we get her dad because he's a master assassin yeah. and we either get reference to a daughter or we see a little girl. Cause there are things that are, that again, for a general audience would be obscure enough that I kind of wouldn't have thought we would see, especially that early. Now that we've done Asriel, I just kind of feel like anything is game. Spoiler. Yeah. I, I yeah. could see, I'm not calling Asriel obscure. I'm just saying that you know, like for, for, for us, for comic book fans, uh, but that's not a thing that I really expected to see. No. That really, I kind that, of, that really I is kind these of people we going, we, we want to mine everything. And yeah, Clue, well, and I want Clue Master as a straight up game show host. 
Oh, see, I want Clue Master as a as a uh, rival Edward Nigma, and they just keep trying to like outthink each other. Oh boy, that's a good idea. Yeah, what do we do? Okay, so what do we do with the Nigma uh, Cobblepot relationship? I don't know what because we do with Nigma. Because they keep flirting with it. Like Nigma doesn't have a role in the city right now. Not yet. Um, but he did. Well, here's the thing: the aftermath. What is exactly the aftermath going to look like of what happened at Arkham? I wonder if Nigma becomes the agent of the Core of the Owls now that Hugo Strange is out is out of the. I the think picture. he's, but I think he's just gonna try to figure them out. That might be. But what I'm trying to figure out is where is he exactly at the end of that? Has like, like, because he gets control of that room. D- does he end up? Well, and th- but then he helps them get to the bomb, but oh, then they yeah. lock him up, and he's like, hey, let me out. Oh, that's right. Okay. That's the last I remember seeing. Maybe he blew up. Maybe he died. We didn't know. <laughs> I was just, I was trying to remember if he was Maybe free he was in not. that cell, and a truck drove in front of it, and then the whole facility blew up. Um, I would bet you money that if we don't skip a lot of time, the very next thing you see happen is... Cobblepot breaks him out, and then they team up. If he's sealed away. Yeah. If the whole facility blew up, so like... Oh, yeah, that's right. I can't keep up with this show. That's going to be a thing, by the way. That's going to be a running gag, is that we have crazy superpowered people at the police station because we, we don't have a place to put them because Arkham blew up. Yeah, and so we'll just have... It, like like We'll be completely ill-equipped. We'll have these open cells... Wait, did Arkham blow up? I keep saying that. See, is they, they I don't remember. The, the no, it, no, it didn't. It didn't. Okay. They, they kept the building intact. That yeah. With the water. I'm pretty sh- no, I'm no, 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 no. They didn't. They didn't blow up the facility. You're right. They just kept talking about it, and then they yeah. stopped nuke. Yeah, that's why. No, you, you, okay. you, you made me doubt myself for a minute. That's right. why. That's right. why. That's no, why I'm I think. Wrong. That's why I think Nigma is still. And locked I just up. watched it yesterday before I recorded the video. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't looked at it in two or three weeks. And I didn't take notes because I didn't have to talk about it. <laughs> um, okay, so we're we're over an hour. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? Um, any, um, like, I'm sure we can make all kinds of outlandish predictions. Uh, I still I still say I still say uh, Jim and Barbara get married. I still think that happens. Do you think Jim becomes commissioner in the season and like they and they they stick with that? Maybe Bullock dies and he takes over. Well, re- remember and and like and like no offense or nothing, but um, but in your vlogs, uh, you keep using captain and commissioner interchangeably. Yeah, I do. And remember that commission the commissioner is Loeb. You're right. And so what I'm wondering is if uh, I'm just used in Batman comics to the the, the person in charge. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, but like, but like, uh, Bullock is the captain right now, but there's still a commissioner. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if Gordon doesn't actually totally get like the commissioner role finally, because um, they would see that as like a really cool ironic thing because he was on the run and a fugitive this last season. <laughs> and so now I he know. takes over the entire right. Like they would think that was all creative and clever up well it's it's like poetry it rhymes <laughs> right so i don't know that's that's what i kind of that's what i kind of see happening um do you want to make one final like big just completely outlandish prediction for next for next season oh boy wow uh yeah i'll try to come up with something sure go ahead i i'm, I'm trying to come up with something too um i, I just i, I gotta see if I can i'm gonna all right big all right enough. all right i I'm gonna say next season ends in a cliffhanger, and the reveal and the reveal is oh Raza Ghoul shows up, and it is the Arrow Raza Ghoul, and then season four of Gotham <laughs> is on the CW. <laughs> um, see, and the I reason keep... there's no Batman in the Arrow Flashverse is because this is happening. Thirteen years years old? Yes. <laughs> See, I keep saying that I want to see legitimately a uh, a crossover, an interdimensional crossover, like we did with Supergirl. It's going to happen. I okay. really want to see God. No, I don't think so, because I, I think it would be much harder for them to negotiate with, through Fox. 
Than I'm it telling was you, with, telling with... you, as I ghoul, CW <laughs> season four. That's, oh my god, that's that's the best thing ever. Um, boy, I don't know, I don't know if I can get more outlandish than that. Um, you know what the weirdest thing about this show is? Yeah, its showrunner did real TV shows before this. Like, it's yeah. not like they have a track record of this. Yeah. Like, they did real TV shows. I really think at some point we threw our hands up in the air and went, you know what, we we really we really took a, a, a wrong turn somewhere. Let's just keep driving in that direction. And no one seems to have noticed. Yeah, yeah. I know, I don't know. I mean, they just, they bought this massive blindfold. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I'm also going to say yeah. that they care so little about comic book continuity and rules. Solomon Grundy's born on a Wednesday. <laughs> um, I think when inevitably Bruce Wayne talks to uh, uh, Thomas Wayne, it's Adam West. Yeah, that's probably. Well, no, because we know who Thomas Wayne is. Isn't he in the. Isn't he in the first episode? Like, there's an actor, isn't there? We actually see him? I think so. I think we see their bodies, right? Okay, so he, so he's rapidly aged since then. It was it was like it was like two years ago. That's like that's like seven years in Gotham time. <laughs> or however much time I want it to be getting from location to location and scene to scene. Okay, then Adam West is the president of the United States. That, that can happen. Uh, I would oh, make the outlandish Adam prediction. I want to make the outlandish prediction that we actually leave Gotham at some point and go to another city somewhere. Bloodhaven? That, like, we actually see something of what the world looks like outside of that city. How great would it be if we had, like, half a season where, like, it, like the title card came up Gotham, but it just said Bloodhaven? <laughs> because much like Tim Drake, where we're like, oh, hey, we had neighbors. Yeah. Gotham as a city goes, oh, hey, we had neighbors. And it's like the Jersey to our New York. Now, I will say that I always liked the idea that we don't get to see outside of Gotham because it's supposed to be almost like a world unto itself. And it's it's so it's so wrong and crazy that if you left it, the world outside of it would just look like n- normal. Based on the Ninja Turtles movie, there could be snow mountains right outside the city. <laughs> but... But I do, but I do think maybe at some point we'll actually leave it and and go somewhere. Um, okay, I'm gonna predict thirteen year old Talia Al Ghul. Ooh, yeah, like that, that that that. Have we mentioned the League of Assassins? I don't. I think feel so. like they've been mentioned. Well, maybe maybe so. I don't I don't remember. I thought they've been mentioned. It's hard to keep track with this show. Yeah, because so much stuff's already been used. You'll get these really surreal moments where you'll have seven major comic book characters in a room together that you never see together. And you'll yeah. be like, oh, wow, we just had this mission, this this this, this big, this, we just had this big covert mission with 13-year-old Bruce Wayne, Alfred Pennyworth, Lucius Fox, Harvey Bullock, Jim Gordon. <laughs> like, it's such a weird group of people that we put together what's what's gonna happen is it's kind of fun in in like two three seasons bruce wayne's gonna gonna be older and he's gonna be like none of this makes any sense (laughs) and then it's gonna reveal that this whole show has been a truman show like show yes for bruce wayne and that they were just slapping plots together and once he gets old enough to realize he leaves (laughs) <laughs> he just he just walks out just on walks the water out. like in like in Truman Show. Yeah, and then and the, like this would be a huge coup. It, it, it's it sounds impossible, but but the last shot you get of it is we go behind the set and we see who the creator is, and and like in the Truman Show, the creator of the show is talking to him and trying to get him to stay in, in inside the city, right? And it's Tim Burton. <laughs> or alternative ending for the series we pull out we keep pulling out whole thing took place on a snowflake i mean how does that show end gotham yeah I, 
when it started, I always assumed like uh, that shot from um, Mask of the Phantasm, where like you put on the the you put on the, the the gloves and the mask, and you're in shadow, and you don't show it, and you just show Alfred's reaction credits. Now I have no idea. Yeah, because that wouldn't shock anyone now. Now it ends with, with like, Gordon, Alfred, and and Bruce in a helicopter flying away as as Gotham is nuked, um, and and they they they're going to find a better life. That's how the show ends. Oh, I also want to predict uh, the city gets attacked by a giant anim- animatronic dinosaur. <laughs> and he puts it in the cave. Yeah, and he puts it in the cave, and that that's when we finally find out that the cave is a little bit bigger than we think because you can't put it down there right now. I'm also gonna guess that we do No Man's Land in 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 if not this season in this show. See, that will I, happen in this show. Yeah, I think it will too. And I was gonna predict that earlier, but that seemed like such an obvious thing for me to say that I was avoiding it. But yeah, if not No Man's Land. We at least wall off the city. I could see, and and I could see some sort of a blend of No Man's Land and Zero Year? Because Zero Year is kind of another No Man's Land. Yeah. Or, well, I mean, now, No Man's Land is another Zero Year. If you go chronologically. Well, yeah. You know what I mean, though. Yeah, I'm not going chronologically because I know which one came first. Although, with both those stories, my question is, what was the Court of Owls doing? Yeah. Y- yes. Naturally, um, might be cool. It might be neat to literally shake things up by opening a season with Cataclysm. That'd be cool. Like you just start it with, and then and then there was an earthquake, and it doesn't have to be made <laughs> by an earthquake machine. <laughs> just black screen, white text, and then there was an earthquake. You know what? This show needs silent film type intertitles. That would be great. It really does. I think it would add a lot to this show. I'm going to make an actual, like, not really outlandish prediction at all. Yeah. I bet you we're going to see a Court of the Owls Council, and one of them is Scott Snyder. Oh, And one of them is Greg Capullo. That would be awesome. But we haven't really done a lot of those kinds of cameos in this show. Yeah. I mean, it'd be cool if they did stuff like that. But, like, this is... This is something that is very specifically their thing. Yeah. And it's from like two years ago. Oh no, no, you're no, you're absolutely right. It's a good idea. Um I like how Jeff Johns used to be involved in the show. <laughs> you know, like there was a time where he talked about what the vision of the show was. I'd love to hear him talk about it now. Did he? Did he talk about the vision of what was the vision of the show? Well, I mean, I mean, just just the, just kind of the generic what you would expect you reimagining of the origin of Batman, but like he was apparently involved early on, like like a lot of the, or not a lot of, but the the marketing stuff that I saw with you know interviewing cast and crew and stuff. There was like a ten minute you know little featurette thing online. He was in that. I'm I'm, I'm gonna guess if you ask him now, like. What, how, what do you see the vision of this show as? And he'd go, well, I tried to see the vision. And all I could go was just, oh, God, it's full of stars. <laughs> and then I became a star child. Yeah. Man, what a surreal show. Well, <laughs> um, any, anything else you want to throw out? Um, <laughs> you it's know, hard not to just keep going. Um... We're going to introduce Tom, Tom Robin, Tim Robin, whatever his name is in Dark Knight Rises. He's going to be a character. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, why can't I think of his name? Now that you've said that. Tim Blake. John, John, John Blake. John Blake, Robin. Robin, yeah, John, Robin Blake. John Blake. Yeah. He's going to show up. He'll be in there. Yeah. And, uh, and Harold the Mechanic. I hope the mechanic probably will show up. You got to have that guy at some point, right? Yeah. And since we Actually, had, and since we had Gordon, um, since we since we gave Leslie Tompkins to Gordon as a major love interest, and she got pregnant and had a miscarriage, isn't that what happened? 
I thought she just took the child with her. No, I thought she. I, I thought. I thought it didn't. Ha- see, I can't even remember now. I don't I know. Can't Such a soap opera show. I can't even remember. Um, I can't even. I can't even keep track of stuff like that right now. But I. I could see. Um, I could see doing the the uh, doing it the other way and bringing in Harold, who's 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 kind of this you know often recurring but minor character, uh, and like like uh, somebody dates him. Alfred. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Of course. <laughs> And at some point, we're going to get a Fight Club-esque twist. Fight Club-esque twist, where Alfred is Bruce's imaginary friend. I, I knew you were going to say that. That's fantastic. It, it would explain so much. Except that people have talked to Alfred when Bruce isn't there. Which, in the Fight Club world, would just be them talking to Bruce, but Bruce being Alfred. That's true, and there are a lot of, like, the only, yeah, the problem with that is there are places where Alfred is clearly in a room when Bruce isn't, but there are so many baffling places where Bruce is allowed to be in places there's no way he would be allowed to be in. Yeah, that, and, and on the Bizarre Fight happens Club Happens a logic. lot. And are they ever both doing something, like, truly, or is one of them doing something and someone else is watching? I think they might be the same person. I mean, I love how... One of another of those great jump the shark moments. Although there are so many that you can't even you know use that phrase anymore. But what what but one of my favorites is when uh, Bruce when, is one like, of the juggle the shark moments. Yeah, where yeah 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 where where Bruce says Alfred, you're fired. He's like, okay, I guess I'll leave you by yourself. <laughs> like that's not how that works. Like he's are his, we ever going to get back to Bruce's he's his formal guardian. education? guardian. What are you doing? What, what's that now? I said, are we ever going to get back to Bruce's formal education? Yeah, I don't even know. If, is he homeschooled now? Does he go to school? I don't even know anymore. I thought they started him getting homeschooled, right? And they then did, we just... and then I thought at one point he decided, no, I'll go back to school. It's like that Smallville thing where sometimes I'm not sure if Lex has his own company or is working for Lionel Luther. Well, I think he was going to be homeschooled, and then he left to be... An avenging figure of the night with 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 uh, Selena, which they played up like back. that was going to happen for several episodes, and it was like two. Yeah, yeah. Um, Naturally, and and at some point this season, Selena's going to get another boy to crush on. It's going to make Bruce jealous. Oh yes, yeah, so probably. Course. We got probably sh- school bully Bane. We can. <laughs> We are totally <laughs> see, see, I, I really think Bane's going to happen this year. I want your version so bad. <laughs> I love that idea. Oh, we didn't talk about Vicky Vale. She's coming this season. That's not a prediction. That's happening. <laughs> We're getting Vicky Vale this season, and she's going to already be a reporter. So once again, we'll have another another character that is already several years older than than Bruce. Um, that you you know, it's especially funny when it's love interests. Yeah. Well, I guess this is the first of those, right? Because so far, those have all been... Silver St. Cloud. Silver St. Cloud was younger. Oh, yeah. No, she was, like, Bruce's age, or just yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. older or younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, of course, Selena Kyle's age. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of anybody else they've introduced that's not his age. So, I don't know what they'll do with Vicky Vale. Um, maybe they'll make her another love interest for Jim Gordon. I could sure well, see that. Well, she could just be, like, an older girl. Like, she could be, like, 17. Well, no, that's true. But if you look at the track record with this show and how they handle women, if she's not, all, if she's not like, around Bruce's Maybe age, she's... she'll be a love interest for Jim Gordon. <laughs> well, and this... And the show has no... Like, there, there are no... Ages. There's no age differences in dating. So she could be a young intrepid reporter and be Alfred's girlfriend because yeah. he went after Leslie Tompkins yeah, as if that was in any way a possible thing. Yeah, yeah, like that wasn't really weird. And that was one of the most awkward things I've ever seen on television. And it yeah, wasn't it was... awkward in the way they thought it was or the way it played like maybe it thought it was, but I'm not sure. And maybe it was exactly what it was to me and that's what they wanted because I don't know about intention with the show. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I I want to. I'll go out and say it, Eric. Um, if I ever f- power through and get finished with counting with counting crypto freaks, this will be the next one. 
what and was... I will lose my mind and I will turn into a crazy person. At the very least, I want to do commentaries on these. Yeah. I'm 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 still I'm still saying season two. It's Netflix. Everyone watches it, and it's just in the mouth of madness. We're just reality alters, and we're all living in Gotham. Yeah, and then you don't know that could even have been their intention all along. Like well, they, they might... didn't know it when they started writing it, but then the creatures started talking to them. Right, right, yeah, and now they're they're hoping that they can get enough people to watch it that it makes us like rip apart. Uh everything and like loot grocery stores and at least we'll finally return to the appropriate black and white barred prison uniforms yeah well i mean that's something eric that's that's good yeah because that's how they should look and orange we'll, is too aggressive and we'll live and we'll live in a world where you can use black crayon and write on yourself <laughs> where that's possible and where you can go use... crazy just trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and where a single black crown will get you as much writing all over padded walls as you want to do. I'm just saying, if John Carpenter directs an episode of this, of this of this show, I'm pretty sure it'll look exactly the same. Yeah, and it probably won't totally shift at all. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Is that why I like it? Is this a John Carpenter TV show? <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, man. Well, everybody, thanks always for listening. Uh, let us know in the comments things you think might happen in Gotham. And uh, see if you can make a prediction so outlandish it couldn't possibly come true. Oh, oh. Yeah. And there's going to be an episode where someone's trapped in virtual reality. That's going to happen. You think they'll do that? The Oculus Rift is coming. Virtual reality is coming back. We're going to have an episode where someone's trapped in virtual reality. Yeah, and it's got to be a Riddler-centered episode because they did that in the animated series. And I hope it, it, it looks like... Uh, I, I hope it looks like a PS1 like one game. Uh, well, I hope it looks like a uh, a Virtual Boy game because it was like Red and... Oh, that'd be great. It was like Red and Black in that show. Yeah. Wasn't it? Wasn't it Reds? I don't remember. I don't particularly care for that episode. Yeah, that's actually one that uh, Steve and I are... I think that's the the next one or second the next one that we're supposed to do a commentary on. We're right at that. Yeah, I don't I don't care for the episode. And that ending is kind of unintentionally really dark. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I like a lot of things about it aesthetically. I think there's a lot of creative choices visually. But yeah, it's, it's the one episode that is most dated. Yeah. Uh, but anyway... We were we, saying goodbye. We and digress. Now we're kind of reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we'd love to hear from you folks about this show and about what you think you might see in season three. Uh, we threw a bunch of predictions at you, and uh, Eric, I imagine at least one or two things we said will happen. Yeah. Um, unlike a lot of things we've done speculation videos on, uh, it's hard to it's hard to be sure that you'd nail anything because it's in it, <laughs> it's incredibly unpredictable. This show. I can't wait to have a character with a peg leg. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, and, and you know what? You, you know, something we should have speculated about was other objects that might be on Butch's other hand. <laughs> <laughs> like TV remote control in orange. <laughs> a bowling ball. Well, that's useless. How could you? Well, I guess you could hit somebody with it. <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's, if, if it's usually... If Barbara's still there, she'll just put things on his hand because she thinks it looks cool. An ice cream cone. <laughs> that one doesn't last very long. Oh, man. This should have been the whole video. <laughs> a soda can. And an upside-down cup of tea. <laughs> a, uh, a toaster. It's always spilling because it's upside-down. <laughs> A hot, a hot plate. <laughs> uh, thanks again for listening, folks. We sure appreciate it. <laughs> I'm Captain Logan. A deck of Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> a Nintendo 64. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Captain Logan. And I am Eric. And we'll see you again next time.
five.